This is the cheapest $40 keyboard that I could buy at Best Buy. And these are all of the parts we're gonna use to turn it into a super gamer keyboard. First step is setting our baseline. Here is how the keyboard looks and sounds straight out of the box. Pretty good but pretty good isn't pretty good enough if we're making this super gamer. That sounds like Super Mario, but Mario wasn't enough of a gamer for this keyboard. Second step is to tear this sucker down and see what we're working with. One of the best parts about this keyboard is that it already has Cherry MX Red switches in it. Not the most gamer in the world, but sometimes not wanting the most gamer switches is the most gamer thing to want. Besides that, look at how big the RGB bulbs on these switches are. They are so big. I'm not calling them diodes. These are full on bulbs. So we do get to save some money on switches. However, they are soldered down to the PCB. So while we tear this keyboard down, we'll have to break out old Mr. D solderer to take care of the rest. Now that we've got the board apart, let's take stock to see what we really want to do. For keycaps, we've got some double shot pudding PBT caps that will allow those shockingly bright LED bulbs to blind us all. And in being blinded, it should hone our vision to get the most epic gamer abilities ever. Because this is plastic, we can't just willy-nilly spray this down with paint. If you want your plastic paint to turn out the best, you need to prep it ahead of time. We'll be scuffing this up with some steel wool, just like we'll be scuffing up the other team in gaming. Once the board looks all matte with its protective coating on the table around us, we can start applying a primer layer. We'll do this to the top and the bottom of the board. The top of the board is metal and it's not plastic, but because of its paint's top coating, I think this will do better for us to help it adhere it as we go forward. While the primer dries, let's get working on the switches. I like the sound of a well lubed switch, and because we don't have to buy new ones, we can spend some more time getting these good to go. I'm gonna kick this up that extra notch by not only lubing the switches, but we will be filming and adding an O-ring to the top as well. If we wanna be super gamer, we can't settle for half measures. These took so long that I was able to watch a thorough review of Witcher 2, and we are now ready to head back out to start the actual paint job. The white primer is a fine stopping place for how I want the bottom of the case to be, so we'll move that away for now until it's time for its clear coat. And I gotta tell you, the best part of any of these keyboard builds for me is the paint job. I've never exactly considered myself a creative person, so seeing the big shocking change from boring keyboard to super gamer keyboard is always my favorite part of the process, and the paint job really feels like it's the most expansive part of all that. Now it's time to move to my literal least favorite part of any keyboard build, the stabilizers. These were unlooped from the factory, which might sound like a problem, but it actually saves us some time since we don't then have to fix a bad lube job. I considered upgrading these to fancy Duroc stabilizers, but it's a full size keyboard and needing that many would have bumped up the budget for the build and super gamers only bump up for things like RGB, not boring things like keyboard stabilizers. We will be trying something new this time around by adding a few pieces of tape to the keyboard plate when it's ready. I'm really trying to limit the awful sound of an unsecure stabilizer on this build. Our next step will be to get the switches back onto the PCB, and today we're gonna try out a totally new tool. Instead of making Mr. D solderer pull double duty of removing and reapplying our solder, I actually went out and got a soldering iron. That's a super gamer move if I've ever seen one. This was actually harder soldering than normally, and it's because of those huge RGB bulbs. They have to be soldered and desoldered separately, and they don't all stay in place. So we'll put everything into the plate and the PCB, and then we'll put some painter's tape over the top so they don't fall out when we turn the keyboard upside down. The pains we go through for super gamer RGB. The soldering itself only took like five minutes. So don't be afraid of boards that need to be soldered. I actually prefer them at this point because I know I won't have issues with a hot swappable switch getting a pin busted when I try to put it back in. The last major thing we need to do before we can reassemble everything is we need to add some density to the case that'll take away the hollowness, that'll add some just like oomph to the typing. So I've got some silicone left over from the last build that we'll be dumping in here. I was very impressed with how it helped the $75 keyboard build from a couple of weeks ago, and it should be that extra effort that pushes us from regular gamer to well, you guessed it. This needs about 12 hours to cure, so I guess I'll just hang around here and play some games. Ooh, okay, and we've got everything prepped and ready to go here. I'm very excited about this. As you can see, I think this turned out to be one of the best looking boards we've ever made. We've done a ton of work on here, so let's assemble this all and just see if it's actually any good. Gotta make sure we can actually plug it in, right, at the end of the day. Okay, we will then... Ho oh, ho! Simplest build so far yet. The only thing that I'm nervous about so far is that 
The bulbs were a huge pain in the butt to solder back on and not all of them stayed on. So as we saw when we untaped the board, a couple of them just straight up came off. So as it was taped, as I was soldering, they didn't all stay in place. So we don't get the super gamer RGB that we thought we were gonna get, unfortunately. Boom, and it is totally reassembled. This feels so much better in the hand. It sounds so much better just typing on it right now. I feel like this is only my second month of building custom keyboards or customizing existing keyboards. And I feel like each time we make one, it gets a little bit better. And this is the one where everything should have fully come together. I even put the sticker back on so it looks official like the keyboard. Okay, let's pop on these O-rings and then let's pop on the keycaps and see just how good it looks and it sounds. Now, I'm not totally sold on the O-rings yet. I feel like a big part of mechanical keyboards is the mechanical nature and adding an O-ring can kind of take away from that. I'll tell you what, if nothing else, these O-rings look fairly dorky. All right, I hated the O-rings, they're, they're coming off. Okay, and here we go. The Super Gamer keyboard is all set up. The one hiccup we ran into is the space bar would not fit. I tried a whole bunch of different space bars. The only one that I could find that would fit was the OEM one. It's just sized really weirdly, but I think this looks incredible. This looks about as Super Gamer of a keyboard as you're gonna get. But remember, here's how it sounded before we did anything. And here's how it sounds now. Obviously it sounds far better now than it ever did when we first got it out of the box. Lastly, let's see how much of the RGB survived our soldering job. Whew, those are some bright bulbs. You can see, looks like we, we did lose some. Uh, so not everything survived the soldering attempts, unfortunately. But I think overall, this looks great. It sounds great. Hit that subscribe button down below and then click here to watch me upgrade a $10 mechanical keyboard.